I'm thrilled that everybody came uh, for the 10th anniversary dinner of celebrating this gaming world. I wrote a whole bunch of stuff, but discovered that it's very difficult for me to read it in front of me, so I'm going to ad lib a lot of what I wrote here. Um, Emily asked me to explain why we're giving away apples. Yeah, you may not know, but in the Bay X that you receive are absolutely superb Honeycrisp apples. There's a number of reasons why we're giving away apples. But what I'd like to talk about is a little story. I was driving to look at a deal with a machinery dealer, competitor of ours actually, but we were working on a deal, Ivan Doverspike. And he kept saying, as we conversed, because I was trying to bring him out, he was like 80 years old, and I was trying to learn from him and understand, you know, what his success had been in the machinery business. So I kept asking him about it. this guy and that guy. He said, oh, that guy, he really knew his apples. And I said, uh, what about this guy? Uh, he doesn't know his apples. Can you take some photos? Sure. So I thought to myself, for Dover Spike, knowing your apples is really a big deal. And for me it is too, because I've made a study of apples for the years, and, and uh, I, I love the Honey Crisp A because it's a combination of sweetness and tartness and crunch. And I think that the magazine is a combination of sweetness and tartness and a little bit of crunch, too. Um, going back to, uh, I want to give a little background on the magazine. Um, I remember going to IMTS in 2000, and you know this was the dot com era, era, and everybody thought that anything was possible, and uh, people were making lots of money, you know, because they were able to gather up a bunch of eyeballs, and I thought to myself, if there's ever a time to do a magazine, this would be it. And then I heard that um, Gardner was going to start production machining. And I said to myself, they can't do that. They can't do that. This is my idea. I mean, we had automatic machining out there in the screw machine field, which had been there for 50 years. And it was, uh, in my opinion, it was run by somebody who was well past his prime. Now, one could argue that I am too, <laughs> but, but I thought that they were right for the taking. And then when I heard the production issue that uh, Gartner was going to do it, I said, they can't. So I said, I've got to do this. So I thought to myself, what's the easy entry into this? And the, the easy entry was to do a zine. And that, that was an internet magazine at that time. Uh, I hired this guy to help me, and really his only qualification was that he was a really avid baseball fan. It turned out to be a terrible hire. Uh, yeah. And I quickly learned that a zine was never going to make any money. Um, so when I was writing this today uh, at McCormick Place, bathing in beautiful sunshine outside, I was thinking back ten years ago after we started the magazine. And two guys from Gardner came to Graf Pinker, ostensibly to ask Graf Pinker for advertising, but really to check out what we were planning with today's machining world. Or at that it was screw machine world. So I said, uh, they, they wanted to know what my experience was as far as starting a magazine. And I said, well, I had been sports editor back in college, and I had uh, done a magalog for Graf Pinker uh, that came out a couple times a year. 
which is a combination of a magazine and a catalog. And I said, I think that uh, you know that could be the prototype for what we're going to do with today's machine world. They said, so why are you doing this? And I looked at them and I said very honestly, I want to do the magazine that I always wanted to read. And you know, this is a maybe uh, to them sounded like the height of naivete. And it probably was, and it was also the height of, of uh, hubris to attempt to do this. But I thought I could do it, and I just started it, and <clears throat> really didn't know what I was doing, but I thought that I could uh, wing it, and, um, and that you do it, and you do it great, and the advertisers will come. Uh, this was a faulty notion. <laughs> but, uh, but gradually things uh, began to improve, and to some degree, you know, people who I knew in the screw machine field were attracted to this publication. They were looking for an alternative to automatic machining. We now have an element of professionalism in the magazine to go with the to go with my writing, which you know is an attractive aspect of the magazine, but it's it's certainly um, it's not everybody's cup of tea. And uh, but I have had to be true to myself, and I've developed the magazine that I truly wanted to read. Yes. And to my amazement. It actually is a magazine a lot of other people like to read. And, and I want to thank uh, a lot of people. I want to thank my brother who just left for putting up with me. Uh, because I've developed, you know, you know, to develop this magazine has taken a lot of time. It's pulled me away from uh, the Graf Pinker business, and you know it's been tense, and it certainly hasn't been Jim's cup of tea. But I do appreciate the fact that he's gone along with me, even if reluctantly so, through the years. And I want to thank managing editors that I had, including Jill, who came tonight, Jill Sevelo, John. John Iwanski, and of course Emily Aniatu. And I absolutely want to thank my friend and colleague and son, uh, my critic and my editor, Noah, who came into the business. came into the magazine and the business five years ago, five and a half years ago, with uh, energy and, and an understanding of who I am. And he's, I think, really blossomed in this job. And um, I'm very proud of the work he's done. And lastly, I want to thank Risa my wife. Who's always telling you something else. Sorry. You know, I'm not sure I want to thank her. <laughs> but Risa has been absolutely fantastic. She's the love of my life, the joy of my life, and uh, certainly could not have done anything like this without her support. <laughs>